Welcome to the AFR Saints channel, where we provide you daily content on your favorite team, the New Orleans Saints. Do us a favor and hit that subscribe button. Be sure to leave your comments below and smash that like button. Who that? With the Saints opening up training camp, they were notably without Ryan Ramchick. And it was obviously something that Dennis Allen was going to be asked about a lot when he met with reporters opening up camp. But what about, like, but still working towards maybe playing again? Like yeah, I think we're going to leave all options open. You know, I mean, I don't think anything past this season is off the table. Don't think anything past this season is off the table, but what we know is that this season for Ryan Ramchick officially is off the table. With him being on the reserve PUP as a vested veteran before training camp, he's done for the year. So the Saints clearly are moving on. This is the first time, though, that Dennis Allen has spoken at length. He's been asked about Ramchick before, but really it was through this offseason where the question was kind of like you know, how his he was progressing in this offseason and maybe they, he wasn't progressing as well as they liked, but ultimately they made the decision to just shelf him for the season. And look, there's a lot of people who believe, and I'm, I'm actually one of them, that the only reason Ramchick hasn't retired yet at this point is it's just a it's just a cap issue at this point. He's going to do what's best from a cap perspective when he retires, when he continues playing, all that. Uh, but Allen did give us a little more color and detail on the situation today, like, like when they knew for certain that Ramchick was going to be out. I would say probably sometime through the course of middle of the off season, you know, I think we began to realize that ah, it's not responding the way that we wanted it to. And yet there was nobody that was willing to kind of make any concrete statements as to whether or not he was going to be ready to play or not. I think we just wanted to give it, give it time to see what happened. And so, you know, it was probably a week or two ago that I think we realized, well, it's not, it's, it's just not going to be ready. To go. I don't think there's any reason for DA to lie there. Like, coaches notoriously lie, and that's okay. Like, I get that coaches lie, and I'm okay with that. Like, a lot of coaches lie to the media because they don't want to give away any sort of, ad of advantage. Now, in season, obviously, you have injury reports, and you have to be forthcoming on the injury report. Like, that's mandated by the NFL. But in the offseason, you can say what you want. But at this point, with Ramchick on the shelf, there's no reason for him to be, to be untruthful. So I, I believe him when they said they were playing it out, and then they really made the decision here um, just within the last, the last week or two. Now, obviously, you lose Ryan Ramchick for the season. It was a limited Ryan Ramchick, but this is massive. And DA talked about sort of the consequence of losing such a great player. A, I would say whenever you lose a player of the caliber of Ryan Ramchick, that is a little bit of an unsettling feeling. And so that hurts not having a player of his caliber. Uh, I do think that we have some guys that I think are capable of stepping in and filling in in that position, and some young guys that I think can step up and, and potentially fill that spot. So I'm excited about some of the youth that we have on the offensive line. I'm going to talk more about that youth here in just a second, because after practice on Monday, excuse me, on Wednesday, day one, a DA did talk about some of the young offensive linemen, how they did day one and what the expectations are. So I'm going to get to that in just a second, but one more on Ramchick, because it's – this is something that, just as we talk about with Alvin Kamara, his contract situation is going to play out. We're going to continue to discuss. So, too, are we going to discuss Ryan Ramchick? Because while we all assume, I, th I think we all do. I mean, maybe you disagree, but I think we all assume that his career is going, is going to be over. Uh, it, it's not for certain over. And so the question, it was a good question. I think it was this cat that asked, a cat Terrell asked this, it was a really good question. Um, is, is the issue with Ramchick, structural or is it pain tolerance meaning like could he could he play through it but it wouldn't be wor it wouldn't be any worse or is there like a structural issue that just severely limits his ability to play the position well you're probably asking the wrong person because i'm not a doctor so i don't really know that i know that we felt like there was a couple of procedures that a couple of ways that we could have gone about this one was a little bit more cautiously optimistic you know which would give us what we felt like still was a good chance one was a lot more e either yes or no, meaning, you know, you do the procedure, if it responds right, then he'll be good. If you don't, he probably is done. So I think the course of action that we took was a little bit more, you know, cautiously optimistic, thinking that that might be able to, you know, put us over the hump. For whatever it's worth, there was a follow-up asking if Ramchick was going to have a future procedure, and Dennis Allen said that's, that's not off the table. Like, there are many options that are still on the table right now, so it's really a wait and see. But what we know is that Ryan Ramchick will have at least – 
a full calendar year until this point next year to determine if he's if he's going to try to play again. So the Saints move on now in training camp, knowing they're not going to have Ryan Ramchick. So they have to lean on that young talent that DA alluded to. And we we know the names by now, of course. It's Penning and Fuanga. Those are your young, talented offensive linemen. You've used a first round pick on either of them. And you you're expecting those guys to be your bookend starters at at tackle this year. Now we don't know anything about Fuanga yet because he hadn't taken a snap. Unfortunately, we all kind of have a sour taste about Penning because while he was a first-round pick, he missed the bulk of his rookie season due to injury, and then when they tried to make him a left tackle last year, they crashed and burned. Um, and you know, Dennis Allen knows what the expectation is for Trevor Penning this year. He's very open about that after the first practice. He's going into year three, so this is kind of the year that he needs to really step up and, and, and make some progress. And, and I saw some of that, you know, in the spring. And hopefully he'll be able to continue that into throughout training camp and into this fall. And, and I think as much as anything for him, it's developing that confidence in himself that he belongs here and that he can do the things that are necessary, you know, to play at this level. And I believe he can. And I'm going to give him an opportunity to see what he can do. I don't think you have a choice. Um, I, I believe him when he says he believes he can. He's in the building every day, sees him. And we know Trevor Penning has physical ability. It's why you took him in the first round. Can can that manifest? You know, if if you want the glass half full component of this conversation, it's the convo we had several months ago with John Stinchcomb. Remember, John Stinchcomb was a high second round pick of the New Orleans Saints. He battled injuries and inconsistency and didn't really emerge until his third year in the NFL. And then, boom, became your franchise right tackle as a starter on the Super Bowl team. So it can happen. It just happens more slowly for some guys, even guys that are are highly drafted. That's the glass half full perspective here with Penning. And maybe he's going to be better on the right side than he would have been on the left side. Maybe he can't play tackle and you find a home for him at guard. We'll see if eventually you get there. But... But you don't really have an option right now. Because, quite honestly, you you don't have options. I mean, it's just a very literal thing. Brian Ramchick's out. You know, Cameron Irving is the guy you brought in last year. He's a free agent currently. James Hurst is retired. Andrus Pete is now a Las Vegas Raider. I mean, all the guys that were options for you a year ago aren't there anymore. So it's like you have to have these guys play well and be starters for you. And... You don't really need to hear me say it. Like Mickey Loomis, when he met with reporters before camp opened on Tuesday, said as much that like they're not still searching in free agency for other offensive linemen. I would say this though, I do feel pretty comfortable with you know the guys that you would say today are are, are you know the backups. You know, I think we've got some veterans that have played a lot of football in our league, and we've got some guys that we've had here that have progressed and we feel good about. So I. I'm less concerned about, obviously, if somebody comes available that we don't expect it uh, can improve us, we're going to you know, we're gonna do that. But it's not like a target at this point. Veteran offensive line is not a target at this point. Look, one of the guys we've talked about a lot throughout this offseason is David Bakhtiari, who the last time we saw him healthy was an all-pro. Had injuries at the end of his time there in Green Bay and is just, he's a free agent now, waiting to see if he can make some type of comeback as he approaches 33 years old. DJ Humphreys is out there. Charles Leno, Dwayne Brown, who's 38. Donovan Smith, who's you know spent a lot of time uh, in the NFL, has been a, you know, a starting offensive tackle, left tackle there in Kansas City, protecting Patrick Mahomes. Cam Fr- uh, Fleming, Prince Tega Winoga from Auburn, you might remember him. Billy Turner, there's Cameron Irving, who of course spent last season with the Saints. I mean, it's not a very, Ethan Greenidge is still out there. It, it's not a very um, distinguished list other than you know, at the top where you talk about a guy like David Bakhtiari who was an all-pro before his injuries. So maybe you are better off with, with what you have. But I think Mickey's right as well in that component. I mean, you're looking at the waiver wire to see who might become available because in a year ago, Cameron Irving ended up starting for you when you had injuries along that offensive line, and he's still available and could be a guy that you choose to bring back. So you know, we, we know what the questions are for the Saints going into this camp. And if it's who's the number two quarterback, it's age on defense, establishing receivers after your top two guys, and Alave and Shahid. Like, we know what the questions are. 
but there's just none bigger than an offensive line where you're replacing three starters and you're asking two first-round picks in Penning and Fuanga to step in and be your bookend tackles and to not just be competent, but to be good starting tackles in the NFL. That, that journey starts today. Hey, thanks so much for watching. Please leave your comments. I love to interact. And be sure to hit the red subscribe button below.